Regina here, and for Virtual Happy Hour, I wanna to talk to you all about how to use your voice on your blog. And not only are we gonna talk about how to implement it and integrate it into your blog in a very natural way, but we're also gonna talk about why it's so important for your blog growth, okay? You may be wondering, the title of the post is how to use your voice instead of how to find your voice. Why is that? Well, it's because I believe you've already found your voice. You use it every day around the people you're most comfortable with and in your own inner dialogue. The key is really allowing yourself the space and the permission to use your natural voice with your blog audience and your potential viewers, which is kind of the whole world, no pressure. So I have three quick points for you today. Let's hop into them. The first one is gonna sound cheesy. You're gonna be a little bit tempted to kind of graze over it, but really, really listen to it, okay? Number one, recognize the importance of your voice. You know how in real life you naturally gravitate towards certain people, the people you're comfortable around, the people you like? That only happens because you're all being your true selves. There's an audience online for you. There are friends on the interwebs for you. But if you don't recognize that your voice is important, that there are people who are only gonna hear your message from a person like you, then you haven't seen the true value in your voice. Your stories matter, your life matters. What you wanna talk about on your blog, it matters. You have a purpose. Does this sound like a sermon? But you really do. So let's move on. Point number two, practice your voice through text more often. What do I mean by that? First off, get the exercise, the worksheet that comes with this post and actually do it. Fill it out, find out more about yourself, discover some of those stories, some of those embarrassing moments. Write out all those things because those are gonna be things that you can incorporate into your blog post, into your tweets, into your Google Plus post, all those different places to really become that person online that you are in real life, okay? So let's explore point number two a little bit more. So when I say practice your voice through text more often, what I want you to do is start sending out more emails, more letters, more tweets, more blog posts, just writing more. You can do comments on other people's blogs. Whatever it is, if it's your Google Plus post or if it's your Facebook post, just practice being yourself in text more often. I really think the exercise that's attached to this will help you do that because it pulls out some of those funny, interesting, quirky things about yourself that you forget to mention in the moment, but that are really valuable pieces of you. Basically, every place that you use text, start to incorporate your voice, okay? Point number three is, say it again, Sam. What does that mean? I will explain. But first off, it's like, play it again, Sam, like from the movie, okay, anyway. So say it again, Sam. What this means is, Whenever you write a paragraph of text, whether it's in an informal email or a blog post or a tweet, before you publish it, reword it to how you'd say it if you were literally talking face to face with one of your ideal readers or someone you love or someone you're comfortable with. Pretend to just be talking to one person. This step is critical. I 100% promise you that if you stop, take a moment and pretend like you're talking to just one person, one person in the world, that your tone is gonna be so much more natural and enjoyable for your ideal readers. So when you're not talking in that natural tone, you can start to sound a little bit awkward or you can start to be not as effective as you'd like to be on your blog. To best illustrate this, I wanna do an analogy. Basically, there are four blogger types that I consider synonymous with the four types of concert goers. And I wanna explain them to you so you can realize where you fit in and maybe where you'd like to be. So it's time for an analogy, or as I like to say, analogy time. Okay, are you ready? So the four types of bloggers and or concert goers are number one, the who again, number two, the warming up McGee, number three, all I care to be is me, and then fourth is I will make this awkward for everyone.com. Now let me explain. So the who again is the person who, you're at a Snow Patrol concert, and the who again is that person that you literally don't remember because this is all they do the whole concert. Crack the shutters open wide, I wanna bathe you in the light of day. They're not really feeling the music, you can't really tell why they're there. Like, what is your purpose at this concert? Why are you even here? You're not enjoying the music, go home. That's the who again. When you're blogging as a who again, you're that person who's kind of like, Bleh, I can't really figure out a specific tone or purpose of this blog. I just, I can't connect at that level, okay? So that's the first type. Second up is the warming up McGee. 
This is the person who dances in the safe zone. So if you were at, let's say, a regular alternative concert, this might be how you dance. Crack the shutters open, why don't wanna bathe you in the light? Or if you're at a Kanye event, you might be dancing like this. But you're just warming up, you're in your safe zone. So as a blogger, that translates as someone who kind of has some good content, has some potential, but hasn't really started using their voice in their blog. You're not really sure, are they gonna stick around and really be in this for the long haul, or it's kind of confusing. So you don't wanna be the warming up McGee either. Next is the category you probably want to try and fit in. That's the all I care to be is me. This is the person at a concert who is only awkward if you're uncomfortable with yourself because they're totally comfortable with themselves. Their eyes might be closed for 30% of the concert as they jam to the music. And they like to do something that I call the jump around, which is when they're really feeling the music, they do this. Just say yes. Just say this. Nothing more than you. Which is usually just a 360 degree jump around. So, as a blogger, you can create this jump around effect by truly letting go and being yourself. There will be times that your eyes are closed and you're really just focused in on the type of content that you love, what you like to write, your voice. And there will be times when you're chatting it up with other concert goers, other bloggers, being personable, jumping around, and just showing who you are. So that is the type of blogger that you should aim to be. And then lastly, the fourth type of blogger is the I will make this awkward for everyone.com. And this is the person who shows up to, let's say, a head in the heart concert and is doing the stinky leg. Or they're at like a neo soul concert or a soul concert and they're like rave dancing. Is that even a term? It's like, mm, 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 mm. I don't know how to rave dance. But my point is they seem awkward. They seem like they're trying too hard and they're doing something that is not a good fit for their environment or their audience. And as a blogger, we can tend to do that when we've lost focus of who we're talking to or when we are trying to use our voice instead of just being natural about using our voice. So those are the four types of bloggers slash concert goers. And again, you want to aim for that category of complete comfort when you are blogging. Okay. So that was my virtual happy hour for today. Thanks guys.